In this video, we start to introduce the process of differentiation. We'll do this by initially looking at what's called the slope of a tangent line to a curve. So we know a bit about functions already. Functions represent quantities of interest that depend on other quantities, and we've been focusing on single variable functions. Now a curve is just a graphical representation of such a function, a plot or a graph if you like. It's often of interest not just to know what a quantity looks like with respect to its independent variable, but look at how it changes, an everyday example being how fast you're moving in your car at any point in time. Now with straight lines, figuring out how the quantity changes with respect to its independent variable is quite easy. So the, the picture here on the left, you can see we remember that the slope is the number multiplied by x, the 2, and of course that tells us if we move one unit in the x direction, then our function will move up to two higher units, so two for every one, if you like. So with straight lines, it's pretty easy. Now, generally, the rate at which the quantity changes is related to the slope of the tangent line to a function. With a straight line, the tangent line is the line itself. With other curves, things like this, we could say that the tangent line at a particular point looks like that one. It's the line that just touches the curve at that point. And that's kind of an informal way of how we de uh, define a tangent line. But how exactly do we figure out what a tangent line is and what its slope is? Well, it's not exactly straightforward. So how we're going to do it is we're going to move through actually looking at a secant line first. It's not a tangent, it's a secant. And a secant is a line that touches two points on a curve or cuts the curve, like you can see in this diagram here at the left. We're moving through the point P and the point Q. So that secant line cuts the curve at P and Q. Now, from things you might have learnt in school, we know how to figure out the slope of that secant line quite easily. It's the change in y values, or we can say y2 minus y1, divided by the change in x values, x2 minus x1. So that's easy to figure out the secant slope. How does this relate to the tangent? Well, if we look at the second drawing down here, I've got two, a dashed and a dotted secant line, and the red line, which is actually the tangent to this curve through the point P. If we move our second point, Q, closer to P, to Q2 in this case, we get a secant line that looks more like or closer to the tangent. You'd think that the slope of that secant line would be a better approximation of the slope of the red line. It certainly looks that it is. In fact, if we moved a little bit further again, perhaps to another point, Q3, that secant line certainly looks to be getting even better again. So the slope of the tangent line, or the slope of the curve if you like, is what we call the limiting value of the slope of the secant PQ as Q moves closer to P along the curve itself. That's kind of the way we think of it. So let's uh, make things a little bit more mathematical here. Let's call that distance between our points uh, for the secant. Let's call it distance x2 to minus x1. Let's call that delta x, the change in x. And that means we can rearrange that and get a new representation for x2. So if we want to talk about y1, that's just the function evaluated at x1, and y2 is the function evaluated at x2, but we can now say that in terms of x1. So that's x1 plus delta x. So that means we can write the slope of the secant, p to q, that's y2 minus y1, or f of x2 minus f of x1, divided by delta x, the distance between x1 and x2. Now actually, let's replace x, f of x2 then with its representation in terms of x1. So we can write f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x1 all over delta x. Now in mathematics, we can take a limit, or a, it's a special operation where we make delta x go towards something, but not actually equal to that thing necessarily. And that's going to allow us to figure out the slope of the tangent. So we can say that the slope of the tangent, and I'm going to call it mt just for short, it's going to be this mathematical thing called the limit as delta x goes towards zero. That's just a mathematical way of saying q gets closer and closer to p. And it'll be of that same ratio, f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x1, all divided by delta x. So we can use that now to figure out uh, the answer to this example, finding the slope of the tangent to that curve, y equals 4x minus x squared, wherever we like, not just at any particular point, anywhere we want. So we're going to start off with that definition. mt is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x1 all divided by delta x. 
but don't worry too much about this for the moment. I'm going to show you through that by, any, by this particular example. Let's jump down here because we're going to need a bit of room. So mt is going to be the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the function at x1 plus delta x. So that's going to be 4 x1 plus delta x's take away x1 plus delta x all squared. And then we need to take away the function at x1. That's just going to be 4x1. And instead of minus, it'll come to a plus x1 all squared. And that's divided by delta x. Now what we're going to try to do is get rid of the delta x's. So let's just do the expansion and simplification first. So we've still got that limit thing to deal with later. And we're going to have the following. OK, expanding it out, and we get this bunch of things here. There's going to be some cancellations. We've got a 4x1 and a minus 4x1. We've also got a minus x1 squared and another x1 squared there. So those cancel with each other. And then we're left with the limit still to deal with that. 4 delta x minus 2x1 delta x plus delta x squared all over delta x. And there's a common factor of delta x on the top here. There's one in that term, one in that term, and another one in there. We can cancel those with the bottom delta x. I should really factor those out, but we'll just save the space and it works just as well. So then we have the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 4, take away 2x1, plus delta x. Now, to actually evaluate the limit, this can be a bit tricky, but in this case it's quite easy. Imagine as delta x gets closer and closer to 0, this bit gets closer and closer to 0. Nothing happens to these parts because there's no delta x's in there. So we end up with 4 minus 2x1. In other words, the slope of our picture, our graph back here, or this function, at any point we like, x1, y1, is equal to 4 minus 2x1. So that's our answer, a slope of our tangent line to that curve. So let's have a look at what that means. We'll look at it graphically. We've got our, our same function from the example, 4x minus x squared, the slope of the tangent that we just found, 4 minus 2x1. We have a look on the left figure here, where we're looking at the particular point, x1 equals 0. We have a slope of m equal to 4, so that's what we've got there. And you can see that the red line is increasing from left to right uh, at a rate of 4 per 1 increase in the horizontal direction. And that's only what the rate is at that very point. If you go down here, it's slightly different. Here, again, slightly different. And over here, it's certainly very different. Looking over on the right-hand figure, where we have uh, x1 equal to 3, we've got a similar situation, but in reverse, you can see the red line is decreasing from left to right. And certainly, when you substitute x1 equals to 3 into the slope equation, 4 minus 6 gives you minus 2, and minus 2 indicating a decreasing slope for our function. At x1 equal to 2, that's this one here, we can see that we get a, a slope of 4 minus 2 times 2 is 0, and exactly as you expect, the red line, the slope, the tangent line, is 0, and there's no change in the function value, or rate of change is 0 at that very point. It changes as soon as you move away, though. So this formula, this m equals 4 minus 2x1, is telling us the rate of change of this function at any old point we like. 2, minus 3, everything you like, you can figure out that rate of change. So just to summarise this video, the rate of change of f of x uh, versus the change in x, that's the, the average rate of change of f of x with respect to x. But as that change in x gets nearer and nearer to 0, that change in x being the delta x, the limit of that average is the instantaneous rate of change, or the slope of the tangent line. What we're going to talk about more in this set of videos is figuring out that instant rate of change, instantaneous rate of change, without having to go through this delta x process. And there are lots of rules that will help us do that. So where to now? Well, move on to the next set of videos, but check out some other textbooks if you like to look at this slope of a tangent sort of investigation and see how other people explain it as well. Make sure you're making some notes in your cheat sheets and attempting the exercises from the worksheets.